Photographers are like serial killers. Nobody really wants to see them in their neighborhood. They do bad things daily. They take from you that which you used to love, which was an image, and they steal it. And it doesn't mean that they're completely unredeemable. I will help 10 of them if they ask me, but come on, I'm not a monster. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. All right, we got 10 loser photographers asking me for advice. Today's comparison is going to be Canon EOS R, Voigtlander 3D Pop versus Fuji X-H2S with Viltrox non-3D Pop, but more tone. And Sony has been a while. 20 mil 1.8, does that have the pop? Does any of it matter? Side note, before we get started, just a little, don't shoot the messenger here. Ulanzi has a second version of this epic, lightweight, peak design rip-off tripod that I love and use every day. This one is the quick release head for that backpack clip. Now the other one can do that. Technically it's in there, but it's not a quick release and this is fun. So if you use my link down below and if you don't, and I got a little discount code, Camera Conspiracies. With all the hype on new RF glass, do you think the new RF24 1.8 can and should replace something like the EF24 1.4? Not sure if moving into newer glass would be a downgrade even though it has image stabilization. In my opinion, it's a good lens. It's not bad. It lacks the 3D pop that we need in our lives but like it autofocus well, it's lightweight. It's a 1.8, which was totally enough background blur. But here's the deal. Those 24 mil 1.4 primes, they do not have the magic. I've seen the comparisons. One guy did this 3D pop article. It was fantastic. And all these different comparisons versus the Leica Sumalux 24 1.4. And I was like, that Leica had the pop. Whereas the 24 lacked it, the 24 Mark II, even worse. So this is like about same level, probably sharper, no pop. Wouldn't this be the smallest possible wildlife setup? Panasonic G100 with the 100 to 300, get the Mark II much better. Lens better than Olympus 75 to 300, you don't know that. G100 has 120 frames, 1080p, kind of neat fast motion mode, that sounds dumb. To catch a hyperlapse, built into the mode dial too. Uh -huh. Usually you get the 12 to 32, that lens sucks. Listen, you're new to life in this world. The G100 is where I drew the line in the sand and there were ostriches waiting to cross it. And I was like, you know what? You crossed the line Panasonic with that one. I just, I could not believe that they removed the only reason to buy a Panasonic camera, which is like class leading stabilization, and then marketed it towards me. I wanted to punch in the sacks of each exec. Now for wildlife, I do find if you're in slow-mo, lens stay might be enough, or just IBIS sometimes is enough. So could you get by with something like that? Yeah, I could make some miracles happen with that setup, but I had no counterpoint. The lightest possible system is not really the goal. You can have like doable weight. It doesn't have to be the lightest just cause you can get a lighter setup. There's like a lightness to quality ratio that you have to obey. And so like something like Panasonic GH6 with the Leica 50 to 200, very lightweight, heavier than this, much better, more expensive. Unless you have a secret guy offering you a deal with a Panasonic employee discount, I might pounce. Someone reached out. If you ever have a deal for me that sounds incredible, reach vegetablepolice at gmail.com. We're now in 4K and there was a slight crop in to the previous frame. You probably didn't even notice it. Stop pretending you did. What do you think about Nikon's new super duper deli lens? Which one? Cause they have a couple, like three new ones. So here's the reality. None of them would get me into their system. 
the 800 mil 6.3 prime it's a feat of ingenuity and perseverance like it's a fantastic looking lens but 800 is too tight for a prime that's a very specialized thing you're going for i like to walk around and like be versatile that thing is like you have owls off in the distance and it's like okay i know this there's deer maybe with antlers too big too heavy too stupid then they have like the 400 mil prime 2.8 like way too expensive and heavy built-in teleconverter that's awesome that would probably be my lens but that's like 10 grand plus they have nothing so we're waiting for the 200 to 600 can it be as good as that sony dream boat i doubt it maybe probably we're waiting <laughs> that started to tip we're now on the obviously superior Fuji body, but inferior lens. Do they make up for each other? I want to buy an Olympus OM-1, but I don't like the image in studio. Outside is the best image so far. Do you have any tips to make the Olympus look better in studio? It's one of the greatest paradoxes in the space-time continuum where Bigfoot guards elves from entering or not it's like why outside you can't beat olympus best stabe even cinematic looking for some reason with the black pro mist on there just the color science beautiful exposure perfect i'm always blown away whenever i vlog i'm like why aren't i always vlogging on this because two minute files suck and the preamps are bullshit and the slow-mo is non-existent but just the 4K 24P, fantastic. Then you get it into the studio and you're like, what the hell happened? Every time, I don't understand it. The auto white balance shifts. If you set it manually, it doesn't help. It's like over sharpened and cheap looking. I don't understand it at all. There's nothing you can do, absolutely nothing. So just use it outside. Olympus needs to be in nature to feel right. And then you bring it inside and it's like, it's not even raining in here. Forget this life. What do you mean getting tired to carry full frame? Get an A7C and voila. Listen, you jack rabbit asshole. I would reach into your liver cavity and rip it out your mouth if it wasn't filthier than what was inside. You're kind of right. A7C, tiny, yeah, but the lens is the heavy thing, you freak. The 200 to 600, it's all the full frame lenses that get heavy. Sony has a bunch of minimalist lens. This one right here, Zeiss, are you kidding me? That thing, the pop in that for that size, are you kidding me? Fantastic. But if you want some telephoto in your life, 200 to 600 is a freak. 70 to 200, that's a freak. There's a lot of heavy things going on. And vlogging, you could get by the 20 mil 1.8. But there's some times where full frame is heavy and annoying. And the A7C is just so old and dumb. The worst stave in the business, the 8-bit codex. You could get by. Probably better than this, but whatever, man. It's not good enough. It's really crazy out there with all these imperfect choices. You're doing God's work with mumbo jumbo regurgitated camera reviewers. Do you have a strong opinion? First, I don't mind spec sheet reading hobos. It's just make it one guy that's in charge of doing that. And then you know all the specs and he makes it kind of informative. I get it. It's just when I get a new camera release and I have to wade through 15 reviews and they're all saying the same thing over and over again. 4K 120p. It has a new stack sensor. Stop reading the marketing material and go, just one guy go read that thing. Make a brochure. It's an online brochure and then we test it my videos leave out all like really important information because i know a bunch of people have already said it so it's like okay i'm leaving room for you guys to get some monkey views it's like okay i, I don't even know the specs of what is this guy even doing i don't vlog i get it i'm i'm worthless but that was not his question do you have a strong opinion on which telephoto zoom is better between fuji and sony 150 60 100 is good impressed but sony's also great 
Sony's just gonna be better. That's all there is to it. Almost every, I'm, we will switch to Sony at the end of this stupid question. Sony wins. Fuji, I feel like they made a mistake with that lens. 150 to 600, too far. I think that you reach too far. You don't need that much reach. And the Tony 8, that's a Tony 12. 12 Tonys for 6.3 of a full frame. That's double. And stops is at least two stops. There's a lot of weird third stop increments in there, but there's no ton. Of, there's no light. And like you pair that with this new 240p that cannot see an ISO above 13. And you're in a recipe for noisy footage that looks bad. So I'm, I'm not impressed. I would never get that lens. I'm still waiting for something better, like a 100 to 500. 200 to 500, Tony 4. Or like a nice prime, 400 mil prime or something. Tony 4. Oh, hey, Sony. Been a while. Nice color science you have there. That's my favorite thing about you. I have a question, Casey. You love slow-mo, and we already know that camera manufacturers don't feature high-end gear, and they want to sell multiple cameras that do multiple things, unlike phones. They're basically all in one device. My question is, since you like slow-mo so much, why don't you actually buy a high-speed video camera? There are amazing ultra-high frame rate cameras on the second-hand market that have so good image quality. Thanks for not naming any. Instead of looking for the perfect camera, why don't you simply buy one that does a single feature that you love most? Because I'm not a one-track minded whore. I like variety in life. Here's the deal. I have researched this, by the way. There's a Canadian company, which should be top of my list. Kronos 2.1 HD does 1080p at 1000 frames per second and lower resolutions 24,000 frames per second. This is $7,900 Canadian. For some C-mount bullshit, you have to adapt a C-mount to either EF or Nikon F-mount. So you have heavy DSLR lenses. You likely get none of the features I want, like auto exposure. I'm like run and gunning here. I don't, I'm not sitting on a tripod waiting for this thing to fly a Kingfisher and I'm in a hide. That's not my life. I go for walks. So it's got to be versatile. Oh my God, something there. Bow. This, will the stabe even work through that C-mount adapter? I highly doubt it. And you have to just like record for a second, like five seconds, depending on which one you buy, you need a bunch of RAM and then you can write that to an SD card. It's a completely different workflow and super pricey and heavy for the lenses. Then you got the free fly wave, even better, 4K 420p. Are you kidding me? APS-C sensor now. I don't even know what the last sensor was. And the thing with the last one, there's a lot of vignetting on certain lenses. I don't know if one of my lenses is gonna work. How much is the crop? There's a lot of unanswered questions. And then this one, Sony E-mount, I believe, and it's like, perfect, but it's a locking E-mount, which means no electronic contacts, which therefore likely means that the stabilization in the lens will not work. I don't know. Do you have that answer? It feels like pretty terrible, but like, I would love that. I got my Sony lens. Boom. Does it auto expose though? Doubt it. That's important for me. I can't think of too much. You already have to line up a shot, focus on it, there's no autofocus in here. And then exposure as well? You're kidding yourself. And the last one, Edgertronic, freaking almost 2000 frames per second at 1080p. Not bad. It's only $16,000 and that's American. And so was the free fly. We're talking $45,000. And it has all the same problems I've mentioned. I want something that is fun and light and very stable just super stable, in focus, super slow-mo, auto exposing, so I don't have to think of much. And that's what the GH6 might be. Oh God, it's not that good. It's a Panasonic. What are you doing? 
what are you even blown away about? There's nothing special about it. You can't even use the dynamic range boost mode. Oh, what are you doing? You waste so much time on the show. These are long episodes. It's 10 questions. Why don't you just say five? What are you doing? How are you this blown away? Oh God, just help him. Stop. Are you spinning? What are you even doing? The rocking chair is blocking your view. You can't spin more. Oh, you're gonna spin back. Come on, man. Nobody has time for this. We haven't answered one question to anybody's satisfaction. I'm moving on. Hi, I have a Sony a7C. I'm thinking about changing to FX30. Now I do some videos. Color of slow motion that a7C did is not so good. If I want it changed, what do you think about this idea? If it was me, I would much rather have the FX30. Everyone, oh, but it's not full frame. It's so much beyond better, it's not even funny. We're getting 4K 120p versus 1080, 240 frames. These are huge crops, so you're not getting that full frame look, but depends what you're doing with it. That would be like the ultimate vlog cam. I could be doing 11 mil 1.8 vlogs, and then some slow-mo with a super crop, but that gives you a second lens, technically. I can, like, I'm mildly considering it. If you were to get the G Master 70 to 200, that would be your wildlife lens. That crops in there. You got a 2.8 continuum. That's nice. I would much rather have A7C is almost, there's almost nothing you could do. It's full frame but way worse 8-bit codecs, don't do it. I mean, do do it, upgrade. Sell your A7C to a chipmunk. Disappointed in the Olympus picture. If you shoot in bright conditions, might as well use your iPhone 13 or P50 Pro and be done with it. Listen, buddy, you don't wanna get on the wrong side of an Olympus gang. They have lived hard knock lives and they thirst for blood like no other. Olympus, you may be talking about my footage in that room with a LED light bounced off a newspaper box. That doesn't even exist. A lot of clutter. Anything would have looked pretty bad. I reverted to 1080p because I couldn't even edit the files. It was a rough couple weeks over there in Ottawa, but we made it through and that trip convinced me to sell the Olympus. I was like, you know what? I love it for vlogging, but I'm so sick of these two minute files. Something the OM1 fixed, but they just can't do video right. They don't know that custom modes could be usable and it like reverts to program auto for no reason. It's just simple code. They could hire a teenage gamer who codes stuff and like just make it not switch to program auto. They could be so good, but they're not at all. Their slow-mo is so uninspiring. Being single autofocus, locked exposure, and over-sharpened mess. But, like, I'm gonna get the GH6 and be completely unhappy with it, wishing it looked like the Olympus for the vlogging segments. I'm gonna miss that color science more than anything. Oh, Olympus. But you think a phone would look better? Well, will it? Listen, you thunder chunk. This is your punishment for the rest of the episode. We're filming on a phone with phone audio compressed more than an airbag. What should we take for action vlogging under 1000 for body camera? Here's my thought process. I just reviewed a bunch of the best ones. GoPro 10, 11, DJI Action 1 and 3. You know, I did not realize that the Action 3 was just an Action 2 in a different body. Same, two wide lens and not being in focus, that kind of hurts. So in my opinion, the GoPro 11 is what you would want. I was actually really impressed with that slow motion. We got that guy walking by the tech store and then the following the pigeons <laughs> behind. That was good content, I tell you. 2.7K, 240 frames. I'm digging it. I like it. So GoPro, it just has a nice look. You get the close focusing filter on there. DJI would look okay if you got that filter, but those filters kinda, they're weird. 
and they're not very versatile because every time you want to film something else, then you have to take that filter off. Where are you going to put it? Now you have glass, you're going to touch it. Monkey scrub, you greasy freak. And you're going to get fingerprints on it. So I don't know. The answer is the Huawei can never lose any the skin tone. Uh, yeah, well, you could still get away with a DJI Osmo Action 1. It's not really worth it in today's world. I think the GoPro 10 or 11 are fine. The GoPro 10 had better color science. I just sold mine last night. So I'm happy to get rid of that. And then I'm trying to sell the DJI, both of them, because I don't want like a bunch of different things. I want the one action cam that I use, GoPro 11. So that's my decision. Seeing all the footage, the DJI 3 has the worst 240p I've ever seen. So it's like, that's really fun for me. That's why I get these things. Discreet, super stabilized slow-mo, fun times. So DJI, you've ruined my heart in that area. So. You've learned a lot today. I didn't, I already knew all this stuff and we move on. There's affiliate links down there for some of the stuff I mentioned and I appreciate you buying it. Especially when the Huawei P40 Pro is the best vlogging camera ever made. I touched the mic. 960 frames per second, if not 7,000.